Hello and welcome to the expanded version of the Wall Network blog post titled Protecting the vCenter Database with SQL Log Shipping. We are going to run through the Configuring Log Shipping section from start to finish where each step is annotated on the screen. We are also going to go through the Check the Log Shipping Jobs portion of the post. For this tutorial, we are working with two servers running SQL Server 2008 R2 Enterprise on Windows Server 2008 R2 Data Center Edition. However, you do not need SQL Enterprise or Windows Data Center Edition to do log shipping. This tutorial assumes you have already created the primary and secondary log shipping folders with the appropriate permissions. Let's get started. We are working in the SQL Server Management Studio and connected to both of the servers we'll be using, Production, which is primary, and Disaster Recovery, which is secondary. Let's get into the properties of vCenter on the primary server. And now let's get into the transaction log shipping. You turn on log shipping by selecting the box and click settings to complete the configuration. Enter the network path to the shared folder on your primary server in this first field. The next field is for the local path to the shared folder, if applicable, on your primary server. This next section allows you to adjust how frequently the transaction logs are deleted. Here we are using 6 hours for the tutorial to save space, but you should base this number on how long the secondary server may possibly be down for maintenance or some other similar reason. Finally, on this screen you should think about compression options. The default is set by the server. We are going to change that to compress backup to save disk space. The trade-off will be CPU usage so you can determine which resource is most precious in your setup. Click OK to accept the settings and go back to the database properties. Now we can add the secondary database. Start by clicking Add in the appropriate section. The secondary database window is displayed where you will need to click Connect to input the appropriate server. In the Connect to Server dialog box, enter your secondary server name and click Connect. Now we are looking at the secondary database settings. For this first tab, the default, yes, generate a full backup, is quite handy, so leave it as is. Click on Copy Files. Here you will need to enter the local path to your secondary server for the copied transaction logs. Next, we can customize how frequently the copied files are deleted. The one rule you need to observe here is that this number needs to be higher than what you chose for the primary server. We had 6, so this one will be 12. This looks good. Now let's move on to the Restore Transaction Log tab. No Recovery Mode is the default for the database state. Change this to Standby Mode so the database will be in a read-only state that allows queries. Otherwise, the logs are not readable until restored. Looks like this is all set. Click OK and we are back at the Database Properties. Now you can see the server we just added as the secondary database. You have the option to enable a monitor server instance for the log shipping process. We are going to have the secondary server handle this task by checking the box. So now we'll click Settings to select the server. Click Connect to call up the Connect to Server dialog box. Then enter the server name and click Connect one more time. Click OK to land on the Properties menu again. And now click OK to begin transaction log shipping. The Save Log Shipping Configuration dialog box displays to show progress. This can take a while depending on the size of your server. You can close the dialog box after the process is complete. At this point you are done with the setup, but you should verify that all is working properly. Let's go through that now, starting with the primary server. Expand SQL Server Agent and select Jobs. Find LS Backup in the job list, then right click. Choose Start Job at Step to run the job manually. The job should run successfully and you'll be able to click Close and Path to the appropriate folder on the primary server to verify the transaction logs were backed up. And here it is on our primary server. Everything looks good. Now let's check the secondary server. 
Uh, let's start by collapsing the primary server just to get it out of the way. Okay, and now we will follow the same steps as the primary server, but this time we're looking for two new jobs. And here they are. Let's run ls copy first, which is the copied logs. Great, now let's run the second job while we're in here. Another success. Now we can verify that the transaction logs backed up correctly on the secondary server. Excellent. And with that, we are done with this tutorial. Direct any of your questions or comments to the matching Wall Network blog post.